Well, hello there. Um, welcome to the Santa Paint Along. Uh, my name's Allie and I am a painting instructor. So I teach with acrylic paints. I specialize in teaching you how to paint loose and bold and layer lots of really fun, fresh colors. And every Monday, I have been coming to you live with a free little one hour demo where I teach you something different each week. So we've been working in a series. Uh, we've been doing a holiday series and today we're going to paint Santa. <laughs> um, and I'm so excited for this. I know a lot of you are excited for this. Um, I've been seeing a lot of you grabbing the um, outlines download for this one. Um, yeah, I see you guys jumping into the comments. Please say hi. Hi, Carrie. Um, thanks for saying hello in the comments. Um, anyone else that is joining the demo, please uh, say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. Hi, Dawn in Sydney, British Columbia. Kelly in Texas. Hi, Melissa. Um, yeah, welcome everybody. So just a quick rundown. I always like to kind of let our new people know how this works. So I always teach a almost always teach an eight by 10 um, demo. All the new ones are eight by 10. There's a few old ones that are only eight by eight uh, from the holiday series last year, but now they're eight by 10. Um, and I offer a download on my website where you can print the outlines so that you can start your uh, painting the same way that I start mine. So you can find that on my website. It's $10 to get the demo, alliekstudio.com. Um, also, I want to let you guys know that um, all of the 21, 2021 downloads are available through Wednesday only. So um, the videos are going to stay available, but the downloads are only on my website through this Wednesday. So grab any that you still want to get. That includes this one. So you can come back and watch this video later um, and do the paint along if you would like to, uh, but you'll have to grab the download uh, before Wednesday if you want. Um, okay, so here we go. We're going to get started. Um, hi, Jacqueline, your sister's painting with you. I love it. I love how you guys get together and have your own little paint parties. It is just like so exciting and encouraging to see that happening. Um, I also love seeing the paintings that you all share in the group, Allie's Paint Friends. It's a really fun group. If you're not in it, make sure you check it out. It's free to go in there. That's a Facebook group. Um, and see everybody's paint along demos. It's, it's really cool. So, all right, let's get started, okay? We have a lot to paint today. We are painting a portrait, which I've never taught in a paint along. This is the first one. And so why not let it be the big guy, right? Okay, so here we go. This is what we are painting, and I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can see some of my palette along with the reference image and what I'm working on. Hi, Brenda in Alberta. Thank you for sharing the demo. Thank you, everyone who shares my demos every week. I am extremely grateful. Um, those of you that do that, it just helps me keep going, um, offering these and it lets new people find me. So thank you so much. All right. So I've got the outlines on here and I just, after I traced them, I painted over them using a skinny script liner brush like this. Uh, I mixed up a purple from Alizarin Crimson, Payne's Gray and White. And I am using Golden Fluid Acrylics for this demo. They're really awesome, super highly pigmented paint. If you get the download, you get a list of all of the paints that I use. Um, so that's what we'll be working with. Um, and we're going to start off by finding the shadows. So I start every demo pretty much the same way. I'm just looking for a good brush here real quick. Bear with me. I'm, I'm looking for a number three brush. I can't find my good one right now. Hopefully uh, we'll be all right. This one looks okay. So I'm using um, flat tip brushes. These are Royal Langnickel. Um, I could probably use some new ones. I'm starting to wear these out. And I always like to tell you guys, don't use brushes that are worn out. So don't do what I'm doing. Get yourself some fresh ones. Don't have to fight against it. 
Okay, so we're going to start looking for the shadows. We're not worrying about the color at all. We are just comparing light versus dark right now. All right, so I'm going to water my brush down here. I'm going to make myself a soupy puddle of purple that I'm going to make from alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. I'm gonna get myself a nice big soupy puddle of it here. Um, and that's what I'm going to use to find the shadows. So before I go into it, I have a lot of water on my brush. I'm going to offload my brush. Maybe I'll wipe it on my rag here. And then I can go back with just the tip of it and that allows me to work with really nice watered down paint um, and control how much is on my brush. So, um, I usually start kind of on the top left side, but one thing I wanna point out is this is very light here. We've got a white background and a white hat, so you might wanna offload your brush a little bit more, and we're just gonna get a very thin wash to indicate that the background is a little bit darker than the hat right there. But now when we get to uh, Santa's head here, now the head's a little bit darker. So I'm even watering this down a bit more because it's all pretty light, um, but we just wanna give a real thin wash just to show that the head is a little darker than the background right there. Now when we get over to the hat here, the hat is light and the forehead is still a little bit darker. All right, so we just wanna get a little bit of a wash in there. We will come back and push these shadows a little bit darker as we go. Um, this is just our first pass. So then let's also notice that the hat, the red part of the hat here is going to be darker than that white part. So we're just gonna wash, I'm just gonna wash all that in because this all feels kind of dark. We'll separate some of those shadows in the hat later. Maybe I'll put a little more burnt uh, Payne's Gray in my mixture and make it a slightly more blue. Um, yeah, so we're really generalizing these shapes quite a bit. All right, coming back and looking at these curls of Santa's here, and we're just kind of like painting around the highlights of the curls. Um, you can see that it's kind of darker over here, just looking for the major shapes. Which side of the line is light, which side is dark? And you'll notice that I did not like outline every little shape, every little strand um, around his hair because that would really get just so busy that it would be hard to figure out what's what. So I was just kind of looking for those major shapes. Now, as I go into the shadow on the hat, I'm gonna kind of let it dissolve right here because it's really bright right here. We just see some darker shadows over on the right here. And um, you see how I keep going back and like fixing my brush? I keep like reshaping it in my rag here because my brush is a little bit worn out. I'm trying to keep getting my tip back by, by squeezing the liquid out of it and reshaping it as much as I can. If my brush was in better shape, I might not have to do that quite so much, but it is what it is today. Oh, maybe this one's better. Let me go switch to that one. I'm gonna try this one. We'll see how that goes. All right, going back to that same recipe and just gonna keep moving along here. Now it gets a little complicated right in, in the face here. So we're, we might get a little bit tighter just to make sure we get these shapes in correctly. So I can see it's real dark right here going up to Santa's eye right there. You see how it dips in and then it comes down. Then we have this little slice that's the white of the eye. I'm gonna skip over that and I'm going to put the rest of the dark in by Santa's eye. And his pupil and iris kind of blend right in with that shadow. So we don't see the white of the eye on the other side. Then we're going to put in this dark shadow for Santa's eyebrow here. I'm gonna wash that in. And I guess this is also a dark shape right here coming down. Um, and then we're gonna skip over and look at the eye on the other side and we can see it's pretty dark in the center here. 
We've got kind of a dark shape along the lid right there. And we'll put his eyebrow in a little darker right there. Um, it also gets kind of dark going up to the nose. We're gonna wash that little shape in. Um, and then we see a dark shadow along the tip of the nose here where his cheek is. Um, and then we're gonna jump over here and this is all pretty dark inside of the glasses here going up to this line that indicates the cheek. I'm gonna paint around the little nose, uh, uh, what is that, little cushion for the glasses that sits on the nose. We kind of paint along that and we'll continue this dark shadow down along his rounded cheek here. And then we see this dark shadow under the nostril coming down into his mustache beard here. Um, and then where does it come back? It dips down right there. And we have a little tiny bit of his lips showing here. It's kind of heart shaped. A um, little more shadow coming down right there. We've got a shadow beneath his mustache of his beard right there. So if you need to, you know, slow down a little bit, if you're doing this on your own, if you need to pause the video to get in real specific here around these shapes by the face, you know, take your time there because this is really a crucial step. You want to make sure that you're getting these shapes in correctly because this is going to be what teaches us where to put all the other shapes in as you keep going layering into this painting. So you want to make sure you don't, you know, misplace his nose or some of these shapes. You want to make sure you get those in correctly. So take your time when it comes to this part um, and really get these shapes in correct. So we want to Find those shapes, it comes around. So here we're painting around, the glasses are in highlight. Over on the left side, we kind of see the glass shape more in shadow. But we don't see the shape be consistent and perfect on each side. That's really important when you paint glasses. I think a lot of times when we paint people who have glasses on, we try to put the glasses in a little too perfectly and that just makes them look fake. You're never going to see like an even highlight around the whole rim of the glass. So just don't even, you know, try to stress about it. Don't even try to get it in there. Just let it be random. That's going to look more realistic anyways. Um, so that's a little portrait painting tip for you there. Um, Many of you are in my online course, Features and Faces, um, where I give a lot more information, of those kind of tips where we look at um, different portraits, different shapes, different skin tones, and really compare um, how we represent those. I really like painting portraits, and I, I know that it can be intimidating, but I don't think it needs to be. I think there's just some tools and techniques that you can use and implement that can make it a lot less scary. Um, and I like seeing how you guys use those uh, in your own portrait work. It's really fun to see that. All right, so this is Santa's collar that I'm painting around here. I'm just gonna actually wash in all of this kind of dark because this is all darker than the white of his collar, I can see that. So that's the edge of the white of the collar. We're just gonna wash this part in dark. All right, then where does it pick up? There's another little dark wedge of red right here. Um, and then the beard and the collar are kind of similar. We're just gonna put a little shape to show the beard there. This is all pretty light. So we can, we can show that a little bit more later, um, but we'll just kind of let those shapes kind of fuse together for right now. 
got some shadow. Now in here, this is the white collar, but if you look closely, it's really dark. So I'm just gonna push that to pretty dark as well. And we've got that little swir swirl there, which is kind of fun. All right, this is kind of dark too. Okay, picking up over here. I'm just gonna let that all be pretty bright right there. And then we have the background kind of dark coming up to the edge of Santa's beard right there. So up here, the background's light. Over here, it's dark. It looks like Santa's like sitting on a green um, couch or chair or something. I don't know if I'm gonna give a hard edge there. I think I'm just gonna put some shadow in just to separate that Santa's beard is bright and the background is dark. Um, yeah, we're gonna put a little more shadow in right there on the edge of his profile. Okay, got that little chunk of hair coming down there. This looks like it's in shadow. All right, we don't wanna get too carried away. We wanna leave that all pretty bright because when I squint, it looks very bright. Um, where else do I need to put a little bit of shadow in? Let's see, got that line, maybe a little bit right there. All right, so now let's come back and push some of those darker shadows a little darker, like we mentioned before. Um, and that's gonna give us a lot more clarity um, because you know, you can sort of see Santa, but it's, it's a little bit hard to really differentiate these shapes. So we're going to come back with another pass of the Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson, but now we'll have less water in it. So I'm just adding more paint. I'm using the same um, mixing well here on my palette, but just, I just have more of those two colors just to darken this color. And I'm gonna offload my brush, I'm gonna squeeze it out on my rag a little bit and come back and grab a little bit more just at the tip. This brush is actually working much better than the one I started with. Okay, so where do I see the darkest shapes? Well, if I look in Santa's hat, I see a pretty dark shape right here. It almost looks black in the picture, so I can put this in kind of heavy um, to help find that. Then we've got another dark shape right here. So you notice I'm starting, I'm not starting in the face where it gets confusing, I'm starting where it's easy. So just, I, I say that a lot, but I know we always have new people. You know, if you are first approaching a painting and some parts feel more complicated than others, don't start with those. <laughs> start with the parts that feel easy and the rest of it's going to fall into place as you get more of those indicators on your um, panel. So don't worry too much. Okay, so now let's look here. We've got some dark shadows along the white curls there. And where does it pick up? It's dark in here, kind of dark right here. Got some dark inside of this swirl. And I didn't really indicate where his ear is right there, but I think it's right along this dark shadow. I guess I probably could have added an outline there, but it was all so dark that it didn't really separate too much. So I guess that's why I didn't do that. Um, all right, and then we've got it dark underneath the collar here. Kind of wobbles in and out, that real dark line, real dark right there. Yeah, pretty dark right there. Now, where else do we have some dark right here? And I'm gonna try to work very quickly. Um, you guys don't have to work this quickly because you're probably gonna paint to the replay. I know some of you will paint with me live. Some of you are speedy painters too, but I know not everybody does. Um, but we do have kind of a lot to tackle here in a one hour demo doing a portrait. Um, and maybe that's why I haven't done a portrait yet because I know that it's a lot to take on for one hour. Um, but we're gonna do our best. We're gonna get as much as we can done in an hour. 
Okay, so this is pretty dark, that little slice of his uh, coat right there. Now I'm gonna get into some of these more complicated shapes. I'm gonna find that cheek that's right there and I can see it's pretty dark next to the cheek. So we'll find that shadow and it's dark inside of his glasses here, dark under the nose and around that nostril. And then we've got a real dark shadow in by his eye. I'm going to try to make Santa look as friendly as I can. My son told me that he looks scary. I don't know why, but we're gonna try to make him a little more jolly. When he was looking at the photo, he thought he looked scary. I think it was this shape by his eyebrow there. So we're gonna maybe round that out a little bit so that it doesn't look like he's kinda, I don't know, making a scary uh, expression. Round out his eyebrow a little. All right. And we've got a dark shape on the glasses there that I haven't really indicated yet. We'll put that in. Okay, now where else do we have it a little dark? Maybe by that mouth shape right there. And a little bit by this swirl. Um, where else? A little maybe in there. And... I'm squinting. I do a lot of squinting to just kind of simplify the shapes, figure out what is the most important for me to get in here to make this look like Santa, um, and what I can leave out. So I do a lot of that. All right. I think we're getting there. I think it's going to be about time to do an underpainting wash. So really important um, part of the underpainting wash is to make sure that your shadows um, are all um, dry. So if this purple mixture is still really kind of wet, you don't want to start doing your underpainting wash yet because it's going to mix in with those colors. So make sure yours is dry enough um, and then you can move forward. So um, I'm gonna start by doing a wash for the background up here, and really it's white, but I'm going to call it blue. So um, my underpainting wash is a complementary color wash, which means opposite on the color wheel. Uh, so the opposite of blue would be like orange. So I'm going to make a burnt orange um, from alizarin crimson, and a little bit of Hansa Yellow Opaque. So Alizarin Crimson is kind of a burgundy color. I'm gonna put a little Hansa Yellow Opaque on there. Um, sorry, my palette has other colors on it. I don't really clean my palette. I just wait for it to get gunked up and then I peel it off. So I know it might be a little tricky for you to see this color, but you can see it uh, on my panel here. I have some dried paint on there. All right, so I'm gonna put this in real thin because I know that I'm gonna layer white on top of it, so I don't want it to be too dark. I don't wanna be fighting against it. So I'm just gonna wash that in really, really thin so that it will play well with my nice white color that I'm going to layer on top. Um, we'll also use this in the hat right here. And so I'm not painting around these shadows. I'm just washing it right in on top of what I've put down. Now, as we move over here, we can get a little bit darker with the underpainting because our top layer is going to be a little bit darker. So we can put the wash in a little bit darker. All right, and then we'll do a little slice of it up here where we've got some background, great. Okay, um, where else do we see white? Well, we see it on Santa's collar. Now, I wanna point this out. Santa's beard is white, but it's a warm white. The collar is a cool white. So we're gonna use different colors of underpainting for these two whites. Um, so where the cool white is, we're going to use our burnt orange color. And then for Santa's beard, we'll probably do like a green or blue. Put our burnt orange in here. Notice how I'm not worrying about staying in the lines. I'm just dropping this color in and moving on. Okay, 
So let's go into, let's do Santa's face. So his face, um, the color I always put underneath skin is purple and I normally use permanent violet dark, but since permanent violet dark is temporarily unavailable from Golden, we're going to make it. So we're going to make it by using quinacridone magenta and just a little speck of phthalo blue green shade. I'm gonna mix those two together and water it down. And that's going to be giving us a color that's pretty close to permanent violet dark. So we're gonna wash that in in all the areas where we see skin. So we'll just drop it in. I probably need to go a little bit lighter on the forehead here. It was a little bit heavy because his forehead's pretty light up there. So we don't wanna to get too carried away with that color. And I'm gonna bring this into some of the beard um, but then I'm going to kind of transition it into a blue color. So I think the rest of it, you know what, I'm going to put some of this in that background where we have the green. We're just going to drop it in there. And now the rest of it, we will, the rest of the beard, we will do blue. So I'm going to do phthalo blue in the rest of the beard. I'm going to water that down really, really thin. I'll put it in a little bit darker over on the right side here because that's where the beard is a little bit darker. But then as I get over to the left, I can see that the beard gets lighter, so that's where I'm going to lighten up my blue a little bit. You can see my paint is falling on me because it's so watery and I'm moving so quick, but we're gonna get it in, okay. Then for the underpainting for Santa's red coat, I'm going to use phthalo green blue shade because green and red are opposites. So that's where we're gonna put the green in. I'm gonna put the green in kind of dark because the red is kind of dark. So again, we're kind of paying attention to how dark or light the um, local color, the overpainting color will be and that's how we kind of marry our underpainting tones in. All right, so we have successfully gotten some color everywhere and it kind of looks like a hot mess right now, but we're going to uh, push right on through this. Um, I think I'm going to darken some of this blue over on the right side. I wanna push those shadows just a bit more, so I'm gonna come back with another pass of that blue. Um, after that first pass has set up just a little bit because this is pretty dark over here. All right, so now, just like um, I said before that we wanted our shadows to be dry, we also want the underpainting to be dry before we layer any more color on top of it. I just realized I have this little slice of his red coat right there that I should put some green in. We're gonna do that. Okay, so make sure yours is dry. If it's, if it's wet and soupy, you know, scoop up what, what you need to uh, before you add any more color. Um, and let me know, guys, if you have any questions. I'm watching the, uh, the comments here, so feel free to uh, say whatever you like to in the comments. We can chat a bit um, as I'm working. Um, so let's go in with the background color because I feel like this is dry so we can come in with kind of that bluish tone. Um, and now we were thinning our paint with water. Now I'm going to thin it with um, glazing medium. So um, I'm using Liquitex glazing medium. You can use any brand, but this is going to make my paints more transparent uh, without making them watery. Uh, let's see, Zerka says, should there be blue on the curls at the temple? Um, oh, right here, that curl. Yeah, you know what, you could extend your blue in, but kind of the nice thing is blue and purple are very similar. So if I have purple underneath his curl right there, that's fine, but sure, you could actually have brought this blue up there. So definitely um, go ahead and do that. If, if, that's, uh, if you're still on that step, you can totally do that. Good point. All right, you guys are always helpful. You catch me if I miss something. Um, and Kimberly says the mustache area also. Yeah, you know what, you're right. See, I'm kind of flying through here, but again, it's, the, it's totally fine. You can carry your blue up around there. I just got a little 
carried away with my purple. So you guys are right, you got it, don't worry about it. <laughs> Either way is gonna be fine. All right, so let's go into that background and we're gonna make a light blue for the background. So we're going to use white and I'll put um, a little bit of phthalo blue in there. Put some more white in and I'm gonna put some glazing medium in to thin it out. All right. And you know, I think I might make it a bit of a purple tone. I'm gonna to put just a tiny drop of quinacridone magenta in there, just to make that a bit more purple. And then I'm going to just kind of drop some big, fat, strong brush strokes into the background. I'm kind of chipping away at these outlines. I'm not worrying about keeping those outlines. That's not gonna matter. Um, you can see how I'm changing the direction of my brush strokes. I'm letting the brush strokes kind of run off the page and let them feel random. We've got some over here. And I'm not covering up all of that fun underpainting either. I am kind of just playing around with it. All right, so there's our background. Now in the hat, I wanna change the tone just a bit so that the hat doesn't blend in with the background. So in the hat, I'm gonna make my blue in a new spot. So you know how in this one, I put a little bit of quinacridone magenta in there. Um, now I'm not gonna use any quinacridone magenta. I'm just gonna use the phthalo blue. So that tone will be just the tiniest bit different, um, which will just help to separate this a little. So I'm doing phthalo blue green shade and white. I'm Yeah, phthalo blue green shade and white. That's right. <laughs> I'm going so fast today, I had to really think about it. All right, so then we're gonna put some of this into the hat. We're going to push the highlights in the hat a little bit brighter yet, um, but first we're just gonna get the initial pass of these highlights. And then we'll pump them up a little more. Now, this color does not go all the way over to here because over here it's quite dark. So we're only looking for the highlight in the hat. Um, and I'm trying to kind of cover up that outline that I put down because we don't really want to see that. Okay, so now over here, I think we need to get it a little bit darker, actually quite a bit darker. Um, so how are we going to adjust that? Well, I think before we do that, I'm gonna use this color and put it down here since I already have it. That way, um, you know, since I've got it ready to go, I can just make use of it. Um, let's see, Catherine says, was the fur on the hat Hansa yellow and red? Um, no, the underpainting was Elizabeth crimson and Hansa yellow. Yeah, so the red would be Elizabeth crimson, yeah. All right, so let's drop some white in here along his collar. And it picks up over here. All right, so now let's make, uh, let's make our white a little darker. And we will do that. I need to mix myself some more white because I'm kind of running out. We're gonna make our dark white with um, Payne's Gray and burnt umber light. So it's really going to be more of a gray tone, but Payne's gray is actually navy blue, so it's not really gray. But we're gonna make it quite a bit uh, darker than what we had, and we're gonna put some glazing medium in there. I'll offload my brush a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to come back and drop this into some of those shadows. All right, and we've got some over here and right here. Okay. All right, um, let's see, we've got a little bit of around the collar there. Okay, so now we, I want to um, just go right in and put some red in because I want to knock out this green. Um, I think it's just going to help to give us a good visual if we get some color on Santa's coat and hat right away. So we're going to um, 
First put kind of the mid-tone reds in, and we're going to do that layering on top of the green. We'll use pyrrol red light. I'm just making sure this is dry here. Yeah, pyrrol red light, and I'm gonna put a little bit of quinacridone magenta in it, which will make it more of a true red, because pyrrol red light is more of an orangey red, but by putting some of that magenta in there, it's going to cool it down a little bit. So I think I might actually just do these two colors right away before I lighten this a little. Um, and these are both kind of transparent. So let's just see how it looks when we layer it on top of the green. So yeah, the green really makes it much darker. So this is gonna work actually pretty well for some of our darker tones. But really we just wanna start covering up a little of the green, but not all of the green. We want to uh, make sure we leave some poking around there, but we're still kind of keeping track of the shapes of these folds. And this is all pretty dark in here. And then we'll brighten this red up and that will help us to kind of see the structure again, because it's gonna get a little bit confusing as we're layering this in, um, but we'll be able to bring it back. All right, so speaking of that, we can use the same puddle and we're going to put a little bit of white in there and a little bit more of the pyrrole red light because that is a brighter um, red. So by just putting a little bit of white in there, it makes it quite a bit more opaque and this is going to make it really stand out um, against that darker red that we put down. So here we go, we're gonna start carving out some of those highlights. You see how this red is a few notches lighter than the red that we put down before, so it kind of stands out. We can find where those highlights are. Um, let's see, Regina says, so the underpainting does what exactly? So Regina, the um, complementary color underpainting, um, it provides contrast it allows like the red to actually pack a stronger punch when it's contrasted by its opposite. Um, and it's also just kind of exciting for the eye. It's fun for our eyes to look at colors that um, contrast each other. So that's why you see a lot of color schemes like you know green and red for Christmas. A lot of the times you will see color schemes for companies or teams working with that complementary color because it's, it's exciting. Um, and so it makes the painting more exciting by having little bits of that complement um, just kind of playing around. And we just leave just enough so that we'll still be able to tell that this is a red coat. But then when you look close and you see that little sparkle of green, it makes the red feel that much richer and more fun. So that's kind of the why of what we're doing here. All right, so we got a little red in there. Now let's go in and give Santa some skin tones, okay? So we're gonna start with kind of the highlight on his forehead here. And my four color recipe for skin tones is Burnt Umber Light, Titanium White, Pyrrole red light and a little bit of Hansa yellow opaque. And maybe a pinch more Hansa yellow opaque. I'm gonna add a little more white to it. Um, maybe a little more. So the burnt umber will dull it down. Um, so we kind of just play around with adding these four colors till we get a color that feels like the highlight that we've got on the forehead there. And I'm going to add a little bit of glazing medium to thin it out. And we're going to loosely layer this in on top of the purple, but still leaving little bits of that purple underpainting poking around. Now this isn't as bright as the brightest part of his forehead because we're going to, um, we're gonna push it brighter in the next pass. We're just kind of getting started putting a little bit of color on Santa's forehead here. I feel like it was a little too pink, so I'm adding a little more brown and a little bit more yellow to my mixture. 
And in a lot of places, I'm just gonna let that purple be my shadow color uh, while I'm painting Santa. So I'm gonna let it work for me rather than against me. And I'm just gonna let it, you know, over here where the skin is dark, I'm just gonna let that shadow, the purple shadow be the dark. Uh, and that, again, is why having a really well laid out road map before you get to this stage makes it much easier to find where the shapes are, to know where the features are. Then when you get to this stage of putting the color in, you know that you put the nose in the right place. <laughs> you know that the eyes are the right size. You're not second guessing where things go because that's all been figured out already. Um, so that makes the painting go more quickly as well. Got Santa's cheek right there. Now, oh, one little tip I can give when you are painting somebody with glasses is, you know, glasses, just like anything that's glass, it's like reflecting the, or is it reflecting, refracting, is that right? I don't know. It's bending the light <laughs> so that, um, like his cheek isn't gonna line up perfectly, I don't think, right there under the glasses, or maybe it does because it's a fake set of glasses, I don't know. But I'm gonna have the cheek not quite line up just right. We're gonna make it seem like Santa really needs these glasses and that they're actually doing a little something there. So I'm looking for the highlights here. And we've got a little highlight underneath there. All right. Let's see, where else do we have some of this skin tone? We've got the cheek coming down. We've got just maybe a little bit above the lip right there, poking through um, his beard. And kind of around that curl, we've got a little bit. All right, that feels pretty good. So now I'm going to go down to a smaller brush. I was using a number three. I'm going to go down to a number one brush so that I can get more specific here, and I'm going to pull out some brighter highlights. So um, I'm going to add more white to my mixture, quite a bit more white. Still using the same um, three color mixture, but we're gonna add more white, and maybe a pinch more yellow, because whenever you add white to any mixture, it always cools it down. So sometimes I will offset that by adding a little bit more yellow to it um, when I'm doing the skin tones. Okay, so now this is definitely lighter than what we had, and I'm going to look, where are the highlights? Okay, here's a bright highlight on Santa's kind of temple there. Or no, that's not the temple. On, by his eyebrow. All right. And we've got a bright highlight on his nose, kind of hugging the edge of the nose. At the tip of the nose, it's pretty bright. So you see, I am getting kind of tight with my brushwork here because I wanna make sure that I get this stuff in correctly. I'm not gonna be loosey-goose with like where the nose is or where the eyes are. I wanna be tight there. I wanna make sure that that is just spot on. Finding this highlight by the eye. We can be loose in the background and in the clothes, but we need to get it right when it comes to Santa's features here. All right. this highlight on the cheek okay so I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of the white of the eye um, and you know I'm just gonna take a little bit of this color that's on my brush I'm gonna move to a new spot on my palette and I'm going to dip just a bit of Payne's gray into it to cool it down so it's gonna make a slightly cooler than neutral might need to put a little more white in there 
but the white of the eyes are gonna be quite dark. I don't want you to get too bright when you do the whites of the eyes. And they're real tiny. We're just gonna put this little tiny slice of white in the corner there. And again, on the other eye, just this little tiny slice of white. Um, and I think that's it. So we can actually then come back and just put that little sparkle in the eye, which is gonna be a little brighter than what we did for the white of the eye. So I'm gonna put a little white back into that mixture to brighten it up just a pinch. And we're gonna just do that little flash of light on the eye that's right there, just a little bit. All right, he's starting to kind of come alive here. Um, let's start putting some highlight on the glasses. So we can still use this neutral puddle that we've got going here, or we can go back to this gray that we did on when we did his uh, white fur there. Um, but I just want to maybe add a little more white into it to brighten it up. And we're going to put that highlight on the rim of the glasses. I'm gonna still keep using my number one brush now. Shape up the tip of it a little. Okay, so that highlight, like I said, it's not continuous. We see it a little bit more on the right side here. This is going to cover up some of those outlines. I'm gonna kinda of let it go from thin to thick. We've got a highlight on the arm there, around the corner, and then it kinda of drops off. It doesn't keep going. And we pick up a little highlight right there. We have a little highlight over the bridge of the nose. Then we pick up a few little highlights on the other side, but not continuous. A little bit on the arm right there. But it's just kind of dancing in and out. We're just kind of letting it show that it's reflective and sparkling, but it's not like a straight line all the way around. I think I'll come back now with like maybe some additional white and just brighten up, because that is pretty bright, that reflection. So we'll just maybe pick it up, brighten it in a few places to show where it's reflecting the most light. You don't wanna make your glasses too thick, that's gonna make them look kinda fake, so keep it pretty thin if you can. All right. That feels pretty good. So yeah, let's, um, let's get some color on those curls. So I mentioned before that the curls were kind of like a warm white. Um, so I'm gonna go back to a bigger brush because I want to be able to move a little bit more, get a little bit more done. Um, so how are we going to make that white? Um, let's see, we're going to make it using Burnt Umber Light and white and a little bit of Hansa Yellow Opaque. Now I don't want his um, curls to look green and I think they're going to look green using the brown and white, or I'm using the brown and yellow. They're gonna look green unless I add a little bit of pyrrole red in there, so I'm gonna just, or pyrrole red light, just a little speck. So this is actually gonna be the same four color recipe that I use for skin but in different proportions. It's gonna have a little bit more of the burnt umber and the white in it. So I'm starting with these darker tones and then we'll bring out the highlights. But we're just gonna to start to show that Santa's hair and beard are not purple, that they're actually white, kind of a warm white. And then we'll brighten up these curls later. And you can see how I'm like twisting my brush to kind of get this curl shape. I think we wanna, as we show our brush strokes, we want them to be, you know, pretty brush strokes. We don't want it to be like just chop, chop, chop. We want it to be kind of fluid and interesting because that's important for the composition as well. I like this blue underneath. I think that's gonna be nice. Oh, I might wanna use a little skin tone to put that ear in there just to kinda of show where it is, but we'll come back to that. 
And, um, you know, don't feel like your uh, curls in Santa's beard need to be in the exact same places as the reference image or as mine, because nobody's going to know. Um, you know, that's, that's where you can be looser. You can just kind of play around with it and have fun and make your brush strokes feel good to you. Um, yeah, that's definitely more important than getting them in the exact same spot. And you know, like where I kind of made a mistake and I did an underpainting of the purple up here where the beard is instead of doing blue like the rest of the beard, I feel like that's gonna be kind of a happy little accident. I think that's gonna be fun. I'm not concerned about that at all. So maybe if you're following along afterwards, maybe you wanna do that too, I don't know. Uh, Deborah says, so much versatility when using a flat brush. Yeah, so you can see how I can like do a skinny little line or I can twist it and get different shapes. So yeah, that's, that's why I like a flat brush. I think they're really nice. Okay, we've got that curl right there. Yeah, I think like since I don't really blend, I don't have use for any other brush, <laughs> any other shape of brush because they are usually more geared towards blending. Okay. So let's see, do I need to do any more little shapes before we move into putting some more highlight in? Let's see, we got a little one right there. Um, oh, we've got some of Santa's hair kind of up around his glasses here. We can use some of this tone to get in there. I don't need to do all these little itty bitty strands right here. We'll just give a little indication there's something going on. Um, so Kimberly asks, what's the difference between a flat brush and a bright brush? I don't know what a bright brush is. Um, a flat brush is one that has a square tip. So I, I don't know if those are ever indicate or uh, referred to as a bright brush, but this is what mine looks like. Um, okay, so let's go back to that same recipe, add more white into it, and start pulling out some highlights in the beard. Okay, so where do we have highlights? We've got some, well, we're going to do that all the hair, actually. Um, we've got a bright highlight right here. And you definitely want to get enough contrast so you can see that this next color is quite a bit brighter than what I had before, but that's what's gonna give us dimension. But I'm not gonna put it all the way into the corner here because I don't see the highlight that bright all the way over there. I'm just looking for where it really glows and I'm adding the brighter highlights there. Now, if I was going to spend more time on this painting, I would probably add like more levels of highlight. I might not make such a big jump as what I'm doing right now, but I'm trying to wrap this demo up in the next six minutes. So we need to, uh, we need to make some jumps um, to get close. And you know, sometimes that's what paintings do and that's okay. Sorry if I uh, lost you for a second there. Um, my phone was ringing. <laughs> I think um, everyone in my family likes to call me at like five o'clock on Mondays when I'm teaching my demo. So sorry about that, it was my mom. <laughs> but it's all right. 
You just missed a little tiny bit here. I was gonna say that I'm doing some bigger brush strokes where the beard kind of falls off and I don't see as much detail over here on the left. So I'm just gonna you know, play around with making those different size brush strokes. All right. That feels pretty good. Okay. And let's see, Deborah says bright brushes are pretty much the same as flat with shorter bristles. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing that information. Um, all right, I'm squinting. I'm trying to figure out what else is left that we really need to get in before this demo's done. I wanna put some green in the background. We kind of have this olive green tone. So we're going to make that um, from, let's see, we'll use Burnt Umber Light and a little bit of Hansa Yellow Opaque and a little bit of Phthalo Green Blue Shade. But it's gonna be mostly the Burnt Umber Light because we really wanna dull down that green. If we go in with just that straight Phthalo Green, it would be like so intense, it would just give us a headache. So mostly the Burnt Umber little bit of the phthalo green and hansa yellow and we'll drop that into this negative space here around the santa's uh little whiskers and beard here on top of that purple tone that we put down so it's darkest as it's like right up against santa and then it kind of dissolves out and gets lighter so then i'm going to add a little more yellow to it and i'm going to put a little bit of white in to make a lighter green Maybe I'll put a little more burnt umber in there to dull it down a pinch more. All right. I love how you guys are doing research as I'm going through this demo and figuring this stuff out. Very cool. You guys are super helpful. Okay, so we're going to put some dashes of this brighter green. I don't really want to make it be like a hard edge right there. I just feel like I kind of want to let it dissolve out. And... I think because I only see that green like right there in the background, um, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit more, have it kind of dissolve into the negative space there. We'll cut into it right there. Okay, yeah, I like how that kind of dissolves into the blue. But what I was gonna say is I wanna put a little bit of that green over here by his hair because I think that um, I just want to marry that color in a little bit. So we're gonna just put a little bit in the curls right there because I kind of see a little bit of that poking around in there. Be right here. Oh, let's put um, his ear in. So there's a little dash of like warm skin tone right there. We're gonna go back to our skin tone recipe which is Burnt Umber Light, um, Pyrrole Red Light, Hansa Yellow Opaque, and White. And I'm gonna Use a little more of the Burnt Umber in the Pyrrole Red to make it a little darker, just a tiny bit of the white, because we want to make a pretty dark skin tone now to put that dark ear in. Need a little more Burnt Umber. All right, that looks pretty dark. Okay, so now we can just do a little dash where we see the ear don't need to like put it in perfect. I just wanna give a little indicator of that. And then I'm gonna take this dark tone and put this into some of those dark shadows because we haven't done that yet. And you can see this is like a warmer skin tone. Um, usually my dark shadow areas do get a little bit warmer. So that's where we're gonna drop this third skin tone in. We've only done two skin tones, but we've already, because of all that underpainting, we really got a lot accomplished with just two skin tones. It already gave Santa a lot of form. Um, yeah. We've got some of the dark here. And this is kind of going over some of those areas that we shaded in right off the bat when we were finding skin tones. And now we're just, it's kind of like warming them up a little bit. Got a little going into the beard there. And yeah, down by the mouth, we'll drop some of these warm tones in. Yeah, a little bit right there. Okay, 
Then I want to put in some of our brightest highlights on the, oh, you know, I wanna put a little of this by the eye because the eye kind of comes up right there and this is like a shadow. Yeah, that works. Okay, so I was gonna say, I wanna put the brightest highlight on the tip of the nose because that is pretty bright. It's almost totally white. Um, so I'm going to use, let me get myself some more white. And now I'm actually not gonna put any burnt umber in there. I'm gonna do white with just a tiny speck of pyrrole red light and a tiny speck of Hansi Yellow opaque. But it's gonna be mostly white and we're gonna put that real bright highlight on the tip of the nose. So we wanna get in real specific, find that highlight. Make sure we get that accurate. And then I'm gonna look around, where else do I see it almost that bright? Well, I see it really bright on this little curl right here by Santa's eye. Put a little more white in there. Um, and I see it real white on that curl, a little bit right there, there. These are almost straight white pretty bright right there. We're just kind of looking for, ooh, I had a little bit big of a glob there. But you know what? It's okay. Nobody knows exactly how big the glob was supposed to be. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now I wanna do straight white on the hat to really brighten up that. I'm gonna clean my brush off really nice. And I'm going to get myself some totally clean, fresh white. And I'm going to just grab some of that and drop that in on top of what I've already done on the hat. And you can see how this really stands out because we already built up a base for it. See how that just really looks dimensional on top of that lighter blue white that we put down? But then I'm not gonna put it everywhere, right? I'm just putting it at the brightest spot right there. Um, and then I'm going to add some of that bright uh, down here, the brightest spots on the collar. Not going to do it everywhere because that would kind of take away, um, but we're just gonna look where it's the brightest here. Drop that in and where else? So it gets pretty bright up here towards the corner. Um, I think I'm gonna add just a touch of the phthalo blue to this white and just brighten that up maybe a little bit over here. You know, I don't know if I like that. I think maybe I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. It feels like it takes away from the hat. So I'm gonna dull it down just a little or darken it with a little more blue. Maybe a pinch more blue, darken that up. So I, I just went too light up there, I think. And maybe if I put some over here on the other side of the hat, that'll help. But you guys have the benefit of letting me make the mistakes. So if you don't like that, don't do it on yours. There, kind of overworking that, but it's all right. It works. Sometimes I overwork stuff too. I know I hear that from you guys a lot that you're worried you overwork stuff, but it's okay. We all do it just kind of being aware of it and trying to be not quite so, so tight. All right, um, the last thing I wanna do is to put a few darks in, like by the eyes and the eyebrows. We didn't really do those darks. So I'm gonna go back with um, my little brush. I'm going to make a dark from Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray. Um, I'm gonna make a dark black. I'm gonna try to grab some Payne's Gray that doesn't have any white in it. 
Um, my Payne's Gray had a little bit of white, but it's okay. All right, and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna zoom in on the eyes so I can see them a little better. That's why I like working from a screen. I always suggest working from a screen. And we're going to just push that dark in a little bit further. And we're gonna darken this shadow by the eye. We're just gonna clean that up a little bit. And maybe push that eyebrow a little darker. We're gonna try to make the eyebrows look not scary like my son said. We're gonna try to make them look happy. I don't know, maybe that got a little too dark right there. Maybe I'll lighten that, put a little gray in there. Yeah, it did get a little scary, he was right. Now I'm nervous about that. Okay, we're gonna trim it down a little. Maybe make it not such a harsh edge. He's like giving me a complex about this now. That's okay, I think. All right, let's go back to that dark tone. So again, I made that with Elizer and Crimson and Payne's Gray. And I wanna put some darks in around the glasses here. We've got a pretty strong dark shape right there under the nostril. Just kind of shaping that nose back up because it got a little bit wonky. All right. Zoom back out, look for where else I wanna drop a few darks in. And I think I'm gonna call this one done because I'm running out of time at 6.07. All right, well that was a lot of fun, guys. This was our second to last paint along of the year. Next week will be the last one, so stay tuned on that. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you guys for sharing the demo. So please, if you have not already, hit the share button and share this to your profile so that some more people can discover my free demos, discover my teaching, thank you again. Also tell me that you shared it so I can thank you. Um, don't forget, if there's any of the 2021 paint alongs that you still wanna grab, you can find those on my website through Wednesday only, so you can download them. All right, have a great night, guys. Take care. Bye.